Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer Cook. I'm director of the Africa program here at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. And I'd like to welcome you here to CSIS and to this CSIS Statesman's Forum. Uh, we are very honored and delighted to welcome President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, President of Somalia, today. Uh, as you know, President uh, Hassan Sheikh was elected by members of the Somali Parliament in September 2012. Uh, the presidential election was preceded uh, by both the passage of a new constitution and the successful formation of a federal parliament of Somalia, marking the end of Somalia's transitional federal government, uh, which ultimately proved unable to overcome the divisions, factionalism, corruption, and distrust that have plagued Somalia for so long. A number of factors are giving hope um, that these various challenges can now be overcome. One is that the extremist group Al-Shabaab, which has controlled much of Somali's territory, has been pushed to the margins, uh, thanks in large part to the efforts of African forces from regional states. Uh, one is that the new government, although not entirely, uh, although elected through not entirely a democratic process, appears to have much more broad-based support. A third and important one, I think, is the general fatigue of the Somali people um, with the insecurity, criminality, and uncertainty that has dogged the country for so long. And I think a really real eagerness to kind of write a new chapter and a new story of Somalia that plays to the strengths of the Somali people, their energy, their entrepreneurship, um, their endurance, and uh, their capacity for lively political debate. Um, and finally, our guest today, uh, Somalia's new president, has a strong reputation for integrity, for vision, and a long-standing uh, and visible commitment to peace and reconciliation in Somalia. The president has been a teacher and an education officer. He was a founder of the Somali Institute of Management and Administration Development that was seeking to build kind of management, managerial and administrative skills uh, for those who would eventually um, work to uh, re reconcile and reconstruct Somalia. And he's a longtime civil society activist who's focused throughout his life on opening channels of c communication and reconciliation within Somalia. Uh, this is not to say that the road ahead is an easy one or that success is guaranteed. Uh, and I'm sure uh, the president um, will outline some of the big challenges that lie ahead for Somalia, and we'll, we'll certainly get to that in the questions and answers, uh, the things that keep him awake at night. Uh, nonetheless, there are many uh, who are invested in Somalia's success and who are prepared to seize this moment of opportunity and make the most of it. The United States is among them. I think the audience here is among them. We're all hoping and working for Somalia. <laughs> Sorry, hoping and working for Somali's success going forward. Uh, this is an important and historic day in U.S.-Somali relations. Uh, the president has just come from a meeting with Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who announced that today that the United States formally recognizes the government of Somalia as a sovereign to sovereign partner. So it's a great day, and this is an acknowledgement, I think, of the hard-won progress uh, that has been made to date by Somalis and, and, and their African partners and, and internationally, and most important of the opportunities and possibilities for partnership that lie ahead. Uh, this is a hopeful and optimistic day, and, and as I say, I think we're all here prepared to try to make the most of it. So we want to con congratulate President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed and we're delighted that he chose CSIS as a venue for his first public speech on his first official visit to the United States. I present <laughs> President Hassan Thank you very much. Uh, Bismillah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to stand in front of you today, which is a very turning moment of the history, of the recent history of Somalia, and the relationship and the diplomatic relationship between the United States government and the government of Somalia. It's an honor to be here with you today. Let me 
take the opportunity to thank you, to thank the people and the government of United States of America for the warm welcome accorded to me and my delegation here in the U.S. Uh, I would also like to thank this prestigious institution for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to address the respectable people sitting in front of me. This is the first time that I had the opportunity to address a prestigious institution in the United States of America, and I thank you, CSIS, for giving me that great opportunity. I would like also to thank all of you who spared their time, while I know the, the value of time here in Washington. Thank you. Before I go, before I get into the details, I would like to step back for a moment and briefly mention why I choose to lead Somalia, knowing the challenges ahead. You all agree with me that being a president of a failed nation requires a lot of energy, time and steel. You are not sure if you will succeed. However, the greater vision that I have for my country led me to take the challenge and the fact that if we all avoid, we Somalis, avoid dealing with the, the realities that are existing in our country, however it is difficult and unbearable, we're never sure and never should be successful. The question is who will take the challenge and who will lead. Having all this in mind for a long time, I decided to take the challenge and I decided to stand for Somalia. And taking that decision some time back is what makes me today stand in front of you. I have a vision for Somalia, which is to make Somalia or sure that Somalia become a peaceful nation on the earth, where all Somalis inside the country and those outside to make, can make contribution to the well-being of their society, giving them the space and the opportunity to do that. I have a dream where all Somali children go to school and be the champions of peace in the future. Our people, our people have suffered a lot, and it is time to bring all the memories where Mogadishu used to be the safest capital in the African continent. I have faith of my people who are entrepreneurs and can come out of the difficult times by encouraging and dignity, by a courage and dignity. Somalis are resilient people, and I have to, no doubt it is that resilience that allowed them to still survive despite all the odds and the difficult times of the past. Somalia needs a leadership that can understand the issues very well and can transform the vision into a reality. And I'm ready to take that challenge and prove it to be willing to take that challenge. I'm here before you today and understand the importance of addressing you all here in this critical time of, my, of our history. My government would, wants to rebuild Somalia, Somali state with strong institutions that can deliver services to the people of Somalia. Institutions are the basis of good governance and in Somalia, there are no institutions, no resources to make institutions easily, and even no capacity in certain areas. So imagine you are asked to start an institution without resource, without people who are capable to manage that institution. Imagine on the higher level you are asked to lead a nation that is dysfunctional at all levels, and that you are asked to lead a people that not, that have a level of mistrust that many 
other pe people in the world have not experienced today. And still you have people who are divided, which sometimes believe that they are better off without institutions, without rule of law, without leaders. Despite all these challenges, my government is laying down the foundations of institutions while encouraging public awareness on the benefit of institutions and the rule of law. Another huge challenge in Somalia is that the fact that there are too many priorities that in the end you could end up having no priority at all if you aim to do all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to report that my government has taken many steps to deal with this situation and as a result we now have what we called the beginning of the foundations of new beginning, a six pillar policy framework which guides our priorities. The six pillar foundation that we believe can put us in the right direction to moving the country from relief to recovery at the initial stage, followed by a development. Our priorities are security and stability with credible justice system, rebuilding national economy, peace building with comprehensive reconciliation, strengthening international relations, and encouraging national unity using dialogue. We then thought that these are too many priorities and decided to have three top priorities in the near future, which are security, judiciary system reform, and public finance management reform. These three areas are the top priorities of the six priorities we have. For the last four months, we have made significant improvements in many fronts, which include security, financial management, building the foundations of our institutions, confronting with pirates, pirates and many more. However, we are not done with it as we are fully aware the huge challenges ahead of us. Let me touch what we have done so far. We have fully, a fully functioning lean government, a robust and lively legislature held down foundations for our institutions. We started implementing good governance and accountability and transparency in the way we govern and we are accountable, and we prove to be accountable to our people. We have started steps in establishing credible and transparent and accountable public finance systems, collection of taxes in prior, as a priority for us despite the huge challenge of overcoming the culture of not paying taxes for over 20 years. We are embarking on a new vision with new approaches by doing things differently to lay strong foundations of building confidence towards state institutions, nascent state institutions. Our priorities will remain good governance with credible justice, rebuilding national economy, peace building with comprehensive reconciliation, strengthening international relations and encouraging national unity using dialogue. Recently we have successfully negotiated the key ring leaders of the pirates and has as a result now working, they are now working with the government in order to end piracy. They have handed over a number of people who were detained more than three years in Somalia. And those people are now back to their homeland with their families. 120 young boys who, use, who, who used to practice the piracy is now coming to the government and asking the government to support them have a better life than being, than being killed or detained in the high seas of the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea. Our parliament is making history. With four months, they, are, they had 46 sessions 
and laid down foundations by establishing 15 subcommittees who will, which will, who will oversee the work of the government.